Right, let me just show you. We are going to work from the sublime to the ridiculous. These are sublime trees, look at them. Look at these beautiful trees like this. And compared to that, we've got sublime trees everywhere. But not everyone can have trees like that. So that's what we can do. These are little seedlings that I threw in the pots about three, four years ago and they all sprouted. They're cotoneaster. Let's see what we can do with them. You notice I'm wearing the mask, but with the mask, my glasses steam up. I'll take the glasses off. My glasses actually provide protection when I do uh, work with uh, carving. A lot of people say, why don't you wear a proper shield? But my glasses provide enough shield. Anyway, now let's look at all these seedlings. They are almost impossible material. How can you do anything with that? Have a good look at it. If I were to give this to you, you would throw it away. You wouldn't even want it. They are just several seeds thrown together in a pot and they've all sprouted up. And uh, this is one on its own, so we probably work with this. So let's begin by working uh, through all of them. Now this one, because it's got a lovely little uh, kink or bend in it already, so that's not too difficult. So the base is quite nice, it's got a bend. So what you can do, if you don't want to wire, not everyone likes wiring. You can just cut it into a shape and there you go. That one cut, we've got an interesting tree. How about that? No wire, nothing. And if I were to just put it in a little pot, stay there. Although you may think these are small seedlings, they are at least three, four years old. It's just what we never let these things grow too big. And if I were to put a tiny piece of wire there, that would be a rare, very respectable little bonsai. So that was one cut with the scissors. That one. Now let's see what we can do with this one. Now here there are obviously two plants. And if there are two plants, I don't think I can do much with the two together like that. So let's take it apart. As I say, they're four years old, so they're well established. So much so I can't even take it apart. I'm going to work with every single tree, that's a promise. Uh, let's take that dead bit out. I just work and see how it goes with the flow. I don't draw pictures or plan anything. I just work on it and see how it turns out. Now this one could be made into a cascade. So this is called going with the flow. Now one tiny piece of wire. So there's no excuse to saying that, oh, I can't afford this material or that material. Cotoneaster seedlings, I remember when I used to live in my previous house, we had some paving and we had also a Cotoneaster bush against the hedge. And the number of seedlings that used to come up between the cracks of the paving. And there was so much material to be had. There are people who only specialize in what we call mame and shohin trees. Uh, I really admire what they do, although I mustn't say it. Uh, these mame trees do nothing for me, but they are pretty nevertheless. I think this pot is a bit big. I should really find a smaller pot. I will find a pot, wait a minute, I will let me work on all the trees and then I'll go and find a pot for it. 
I think that's too big. The pot is too big. I'll find a smaller pot. Now this one, this one you can see how hard and woody it is. So with that tree, I will wire the trunk because the trunk is too straight. If I were to wire the trunk, it may make it a little more interesting. Little bits of wire, I'll not cut a roll of wire, let me just use a spent wire. Now I've wired that and it's got a fair bit of root there and you can either put it back in the flower pot or if you're brave enough you can put it in a bonsai pot, let's see the other one that we had. And you saw there were a lot of buds, dormant buds. And that will become a nice bonsai. You see I've made it into a nest shape, whereas it was absolutely straight. So that's what I would do with that one. Now what about this bunch of things? I think there are, oh yes, there's several trees here. Look at that, look at all this. There are five separate trees. I think that it was grown for a clump style. See, if you put it together like that, you would get a nice clump. There are, in fact, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six little plants here. Now, if you put it in a shallow pot, that would make a nice clump tree. So that very roughly, literally in five seconds, I've made a clump style. That is a clump style. That is one option, but there are always different options. If you wanted to make them into individual trees, you can see that they're all individual trees. You could take them apart and make each of these into little informal upright trees. But because we have so many individual trees, making a clump for a change is a refreshing uh, addition to what we're doing today. So that's that one. So those are the cotoneasters I dealt with. Now what about this one? This is one of the box seedlings. You notice that we grow our trees in these little pots and we don't pot them up too often. So although they are small, they are really very, very old trees. You look at how gnarled the trunk is there, the base there, the beautiful little root system there. And again, so much scope for doing things. It's got several trunks, but because several trunks may be difficult to deal with, let's get rid of that. Just to make it like a little broom tree. So it's all about getting the scale right, getting the proportions right. So, that tree, simply doing that. I haven't even used any wire. 
I haven't juiced any wire at all. And you don't have to worry about the root ball. I'll just tease the roots and try and squeeze it in a small pot. Box cuttings are very easy to make. Can you imagine if you trimmed your box head? How many thousands of cuttings you can get? And if you care to just let it grow and let them get old, you will have so many little mommy trees. Look at those roots. So strong and vigorous. put it into that sort of pot although even that pot could be reduced over the years you could make it into a smaller pot nothing it's just trimming and I've got a beautiful little plant so how easy is that so that's that one done so all these impossible subjects we're going to deal with these are Hinoki cypress cuttings and again, they are quite old, they're not youngsters. I would say they're at least eight years old. And because they've been grown in small pots all their lives, they've never had a chance to get big. But it is very woody indeed. Look at that root, it's not a cutting made yesterday. It is really old. So, quite hard to bend. Same with this one. Hinoki is a difficult subject to deal with because in the autumn they get quite a lot of dye back of their old foliage. And you've got to be very meticulous in how you keep trimming it. So what would you do with things like that? I think the obvious answer is to wire them into an S shape. I think I'm using, this is three millimeter wire because it's quite a, at least quarter inch thick at the base. So wire of this size is needed to have any effect. I always remind people that when you wire, you should wire really tight so you can't see daylight between the bark and the wire. You can try not to wrap or catch the little twigs. And I've judged exactly the right length. Judging the right length comes with experience. As you do more, you'll know exactly how much to use. There you are. And when you try to make the S, always grip it with the palms of your hand like that so it supports it. It will prevent it from breaking if you did that. Mind you, choosing the right grade of wire is very important. Don't use something which is either too thick, because that would damage the branch, or too thin, which in that case would not have any effect and you wouldn't be able to bend it. So judging the right gauge your wire to use again comes with doing a lot the more you do the more you will be able to judge what will be effective and what will not be effective so that's our s shape so even that is quite interesting for a beginner that would be 
very credible tree you can either leave it like that I won't bother to put it in a pot and with Pinoki cypress the way to prune is you prune the ends off like that it stop it getting longer and longer so that's what you've got to do so that's that tree done and now same with this one again Let me try using a thinner piece of wire. I know that this is too thin, it may not do the job, but it's worth trying. Just to prove a point. It will it may bend it, but it may not give it such an intense bend. Have you ever noticed which way you turn the wire? I find that most of my wiring is done anti-clockwise. As I say, there's no right and a wrong way. It's just that I think that if you are right-handed, this seems to be the natural way to bend the wire, certainly on the trunk. Now let's see if it holds. It's only holding partially. not as effective as the thicker wire but it has bent it nonetheless well it's done that that was only I think one and a half mil wire so that's done the trick now let me wire the branches with some slightly thinner wire this one is very low shall I bother with that I might You notice I'm using the two branch principle by linking this branch with this branch. So always two branch principle. There you are. Just a couple of pieces of wire. So we've got two quite presentable trees from something which was quite ugly. So that's what we did with those. I would remind people who are watching this channel, I'm not claiming to be a great bonsai master. I'm just trying to show ordinary hobbyists how to get enjoyment from making simple bonsai. And if you have learned from that, and if I've encouraged you, I think I've served my mission in life. Now, what about this? Look at that. It's almost obscene, isn't it? What can you do with this? Now, let's see. There's always something you can do. There is, as I say, no such thing as impossible material. So, let us see what we do with this. Tall and lanky like that. These will be thrown in rubbish heaps. I remember in the 70s and early 80s when bonsai was still not that well known in the UK. Uh, if you went to these nurseries and garden centers, plants like this were literally thrown in the scrap heap. And all the bonsai club members used to climb into the skips to pick up this rubbish. Of course, it used to annoy the nurserymen because they didn't make any sales. They were just climbing into the skips to pick up rubbish. Anyway, this is, I would call rubbish. The wire probably costs 10 times more than this plant is worth. But let's see. We can always turn an ugly duckling into a beautiful swan. Tall trees lend themselves to being made into literati trees. Literati trees are those tall, elegant trees, like Oriental or Chinese calligraphy. It is the stroke of a brush which gives it the beauty. And what I'm doing is I'm just curling it tight into a tight coil. And then let's see what the 
coil will end up as. Also, as it gets older, the wire, when embedded into the trunk, can look very, very beautiful in its own right. There's our little robin coming here. This is our resident robin. And it keeps us company. Now I've got a situation where I've got those two branches there. I will try and do the two branch principle, otherwise I will not be teaching you correctly. Where you can, as far as possible, stick to the two branch principle. This pine will bud back. This, in fact, is a tiny black pine. We used to sow a lot of these black pines. I haven't done so for a few years, but they germinate very easily from seed. And if you take the growing tips out, they do bud back very readily. So the answer to these very tall, straight, lanky trees is almost invariably literati as the solution. They are not much use for anything else, but they are still very pretty nonetheless. So that is a classic literati shape. And what was absolutely straight has turned out to be like that. So that's another problem solved. This is one of the Mugo pines. I don't know which one. And again, fairly old tree. And it's sold. It's almost got a sherry on its own. Look at that. Bit of dead wood here. This bit is so stiff. I don't think you can do much with it, but the top can be bent. So when faced with a situation like that, I have no choice but to use very, very heavy wire. By heavy wire, I mean maybe four mil wire and see what happens with that. This is what most of you amateurs would use why keep wasting wire? Because it's so stiff, I think it's worth splitting the trunk. I might be able to give a little more bend and style to it by splitting the trunk. split it the other way as well. Two ways split. Let's pick up bendable and split the top as well. to use a double coil.
If you use the right grade of wire, you should be able to bend most things within reason. Because sometimes if a tree is too stiff like that, it's all it's hurting now, splitting that trunk wide open. Well, if it's going that way, I better bend it this way. So it doesn't split it too much. I'm just seeing which way it will bend go with the flow as it were. It's been a slight crack, but I haven't cracked it completely. So it will be salvageable. Nothing is ever lost. I'm breaking the two branch principle. Let's see if it works. Needs must because it's too far from the next branch. I don't want to make it a wind swept, I don't like that style. I find these Japanese planes what's very useful because I propped the tree up in there. So it helps me to get the proper balance on the tree while I'm working on it. So it's not tumbling all over the place. That's the only reason why I use them. Many people ask me on the nursery why I don't work on all the trees that are lying around. And there is a very simple reason for it. And the reason is, if I worked on all of them, people will lose interest. They come to the nursery to buy material that they can work on it themselves. If I did everything, where's the pleasure in creating it yourself? So, if that is what is going through your mind when you visit our nursery, there's your answer. They are what we call partly trained trees or untrained trees, which we sell to our customers or use on our workshops for teaching people so that they can learn from doing it. The way this tree has turned out, I'm putting all the branches leaning this way. I don't know what style this is. A lot of people are worried that many of the trees don't fall in any particular style. And if I can just remind you that styles in bonsai are just a convenient way of classifying trees. So you don't have to say, oh, the branches are going to left and then going to right, or it's going to left and then zigzagging back. So the names are given to the different styles just for convenience so that we can all have a common language so that when you see a tree and we say it's a semi-cascade, we know exactly what we mean. So that is the use of styles. So don't let the styles dictate the bonsai. The styles are purely a name given to the way you have designed the tree. Many trees have hybrid styles. It can be a combination of one or the other. How does it matter? Bonsai has to be beautiful. It doesn't have to be that particular style. All I've done is taken that off from the tree, nothing else. I haven't taken anything else off. And there you are. As it is, it is quite a presentable style. Some form of literati, I dare say. And there you go. So that was another impossible tree. So we've dealt with all those impossible trees. And there is one which is a much, no, there's another one. Okay, let's this is just ordinary pyrotanta material that is produced from cuttings and the way they are grown is 
we chop the top off and you can see straight away that we don't need to do anything to this tree. Just putting it in a little bonsai pot will make it a credible looking tree. Let's grab one of these pots. We have so many pots here. These are all little plastic training pots. So creating bonsai is not rocket science, as we always say. It is just trying to see the beauty of the tree and putting that plant in a pot. And that is, in essence, what bonsai is all about. Not too sophisticated. The simple approach to bonsai. And then you can progress on to these major trees. I've done nothing to this. I've just taken it out of the flower pot and I dare say most people would give their right arm for a tree like that. You could wire it a little more, bend the branches a little more, make it more compact, but let it grow. Meanwhile, just enjoy, enjoy that tree. So that's that one done. Now this was the Scott spine that I pulled out from one of those uh, flower beds from the nursery and this must have been started training say maybe possibly even 15 years ago when they were about this sort of thickness so it's doubled in thickness in the last 15 years and they were just ordinary little young pines, Scots pines and I did what was known as the Peter Chan method where I leave the wire in the trunk. You can see that the wire is there. And to save you looking back to some of my old videos that I put out, you see the wire is still embedded in there. Many people ask the question and I don't mind repeating myself despite it sounding like a gramophone that this method I used to use back in the 1970s and even in the 1980s and lots of people used to laugh at me. When I was the chairman of the British Bonsai Association they all used to laugh and say that Steph Silly Chan didn't know what he was doing, he's leaving the wire in the trunk. And this is what happens if you leave the wire in the trunk you get that lovely gnarled effect. Where the wire didn't go up you see they, you don't get that gnarled effect. And that was in the 70s. When I went to Japan for the first time in 1989 for the first World Bonsai Convention in Omiya, we went to see some of the nurseries. And lo and behold, all the Japanese imported white pines were made like this. They wrapped the wire round the trunk with iron wire and you get the same effect. It is wire wrapped up to there and then the black black pine usually is there and the white pine is there. So they used to wrap the wire to make the trunk look gnarled and old. So what I was doing, just as an experiment, was the standard method of producing most of the pine bonsai throughout Japan. The Japanese are very fond of doing it. The Chinese are not so fond of doing it. If you go to the Chinese nursery where they grow five needle pine, they don't use this method. So this is a method I stumbled across purely by accident. Now, let's explain to you what's happened here. This part of the tree taken nicely, but this was the main part that I was trying to wire and for some reason this part died. It strangled and it died, but the rest of it lived and the side shoot became the main leader. So no harm done. Although this side has died, I could if I wanted to wait another five or ten years, I don't have that long to wait. I could make this gnarled as well by putting the wire on that and leaving it to get ballast in there. But I will stop it there and cut the wire off over here. So let's not uh, hesitate. So I'm going to cut the wire here.
take that wire off. Now this wire has got another story to this. This is clear aluminum wire, but it, it in fact dates the tree because in those days, in the 70s and 80s, before we could import Japanese bonsai wire, I used to get the overhead electric cables which were sold off by the transmission companies because I was an electrical engineer. I used to buy this a ton at a time from my company and the generating board and I used to buy this and I used to use the overhead electric cables, aluminum wire, it was called ACSR, aluminum core steel reinforced wire. And I used to strip it and use this to wire all my trees. And that was very effective. And I'm going to gin that. And when you gin a piece that has that curly effect, it looks very, very nice indeed. when the wood is dead it's not so easy to remove the bark but today it's been a wet day so the rain has made it a bit softer now this is a proper gin pliers I've also got a pair of Indian pliers let me find my Indian pair of pliers called the chimta slightly longer and all I'm doing is stripping the bark by crushing it I shouldn't be impatient I'll show you the finished thing in, in the final clips. I don't want to take too much time just doing these chores, but you can see what I'm trying to do. I'm just removing the bark, and because it's grooved, the spiral gin will look quite nice. So, this tree, the only training that has been done is the wire put around the trunk. This part died, and it's given it a nice curly trunk there. And I did prune a few branches, so all I now need to do is wire it carefully and refine the tree. Again, this could be a very tedious task. So I will just do a few in front of you and then I will do the rest at night. And I'll show you the finished product tomorrow. This tree has all sorts of blemishes, as you can see. Look at it, this branch was cut off there and it's kicked back on itself. But no matter, it's quite nice. I'll just wire a couple of branches to show you what I'm doing, to show that no cheating going on. You should always cut off anything which is dead. These are dead. And I will also show you how to deal with the candles or the needles because you can get it to bud back because I have thousands of trees I can't get around to doing them all but if you cut the growing tips out you can get it to bud back and you get a very dense tree in the next season and the way I can get back budding is by doing this you don't have to wait for the candles to grow if you just cut the tips off now in the autumn Next year, it will bud back on the old wood. So this is the way to get bud back. Not having to wait for the candles to go. I find that just pulling out the candles only keeps the length up to there. You can't get it hitting further back. But like this, you can get it to bud further into the wood just by taking the tips out, growing tips out, all the growing tips out. Right. 
twisting it, you can get this very tight effect. It's very seldom that you get Scots pines growing compact. You can get it growing compact, but it is seldom uh, the, the habit of the tree. So they tend to be tall and lanky, and that's why Scots pines lend themselves to the literati style. So these are not collected trees, these are all grown in the field from young plants. See where the chops have been made, chopped there, chopped there. I kept only the branches that I was going to use to carry on growing. Now, do I take it that long? I can always bring it back. See, although it's that long, I can bring it back on itself like that. So there are many, many options. So think hard before you chop everything off. A word of warning about Scots pines, those of you who have access to Scots pines, I know that in certain countries you can't get Scots pines, but Scots pines thicken very rapidly. And in the summer, if you're not careful, you only need to turn your back and almost virtually by the next day, they will have thickened so much that the wire bites very quickly. So during the growing season, towards the late summer, you've got to be careful if you don't want wire marks. I know that wire marks are not always uh, deleterious, but they are nevertheless uh, a thing that does cause worry to some people. And as I say, not everyone has the same taste, so if you don't want wire marks, you've got to keep a close eye on it. Just reinforce what I was telling you. I'm just going to take all the tips out. In fact, the autumn is a nice time to do this. So, so I'm not going to film every single pit, piece of wire that I'm going to put on but I'm going to wire them all and then show you the tree again so this is the end product of what we did yesterday uh, this is all massed together, but I'm going to show them one by one. So I will now take them off and we will talk about each of them. In So this was the first of the things we did. And this is the Cotoniaster. I just put it in a pot, nothing done. If you wanted to, to improve it, you can wire the branches down a little bit, make it more of a conical shape, but that's all. So that virtually is no work done and we created a bonsai, simple bonsai for beginners. Now these were the two very ugly looking Hinoki cypress cuttings and they've taken this shape. So literally two pieces of wire on each of them and we've got this lovely shape. So this is a classic as we come to the little pots of Cotoniaster horizontalis seedlings and we separated some of the seedlings into individual trees so I'll show you each individual one this tree is no more than like three inches high three inches tall okay 
And then that one, we took out the seedlings. I think there were six seedlings, if I remember right. And we kept them all together to make a little clump, nothing done. They were just taken out of the pot and put in that oval pot. I could have wired the central trunk to make it more artistic, but I did nothing. Just put it in a pot. This little one was a dead straight seedling and I put a piece of uh, two mil wire around the trunk, just one piece of wire to give it that S shape. And this one is a semi cascade and this is the natural shape. And that's what we've got. So four little Cotoniaster creations from seedlings which cost virtually nothing. So we we'll go on to the next one. So this was the Mugo pine, which was dead straight with about uh, three or four branches to one side. So we made it almost like a reverse windswept. So that's been put in a literati pot. It's got like a literati character. And by way of contrast, there's the semi-cascade Cotoniaster. And there you go. That again was done in a matter of minutes, that pine. I think that's really nice. Way of contrast, that was that very straggly black pine. I think it is a black pine, which was dead straight. It was about two feet tall, 60 centimeter. We've given it a twist to look like this. You could experiment and try all sorts of different shapes. I've just squeezed that wire into another shape. So there you go. Yet another shape to that tree. So you can try all sorts of weird and wonderful shapes just by experimenting with the wire and seeing which shape suits you best. So those were the two pines, a mugo pine and a black pine. Now I'll show you the Scots pine, uh, which we did. Now this is that Scots pine with the wire embedded in the trunk and we cleaned up that bit of dead wood the wire had been wrapped around so leaving the wire on and making that dead has created a very natural curly corkscrew type gin to the tree and the pines have just been wired in that S shape and the pads have been tightened and this is that tree so all those trees are there and this was just an afternoon's work how good is that and i'll show you some of the close-up of the wires oh yes i forgot to show you this little box tree this little box it's just put in a pot, nothing done to it. We just cut off the long stem, beautiful surface roots. And to show you the contrast in size, big and small. So I hope you've enjoyed this little video, impromptu video about how to make bonsai from things which are probably uh, no hopers. So just as in life, there's no such thing as a person with no hope or no potential. Everyone has potential and so has these bonsais. So I always like to learn life lessons from it and all these hopeless cases and with a bit of tender love and attention can become beautiful things in their own right. And look at that cheeky Robin stealing the fruit. This is our resident robin. Look at it. Take some more. And with that little note, we will end.